You know what, Royce? This shit's really inspired me. So after I drop my album, I'm coming out with the Book of Wooly. Now, the shit ain't gonna be but 10 pages, but goddamn it, you gonna catch me at the Barnes & Noble shutting it down. What's going on, everybody? It's the Granddad of Granddad Wooly, and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews. Hip-Hop Data. We got an album review today. We're gonna talk about the brand new album that just fucking dropped from one of my favorite MCs in the game who just dropped some shit like, what, a month, two months ago, nigga? You don't let nothing breathe, goddammit, but shit, he's back with some new shit, so you know we had to talk about it because he's one of my favorite in the game, and he always bringing them bars. This nigga's back. He dropped some new shit. He got a book. Is it in Barnes & Noble? Because I got, I got a card there, you know, for, like, discounts and shit. I mean, I don't use it. I never I don't read. I don't read y'all. Don't matter. Talking about the new album from Royce the Five Nine entitled Book of Ryan. Now, for those who don't know, Royce the Five Nine is a very dope MC out of Detroit, Michigan. He's been doing this thing for many, many years. He's one half of Bad Meets Evil with Eminem, another one half of Prime with DJ Premier, who just dropped an album like like late March and shit. That shit was dope too. But shit, apparently Royce is like moving on, nigga. I'm moving on. And also, he's one fourth of the now defunct supergroup Slaughterhouse. Like. Y'all niggas, it's all Joe Budden's fault. You, shit, I, I miss Slaughterhouse. But it's all good. So now he's back with his new full-length solo album. It's his seventh studio album. It's the follow-up to his 2016 LP, Layers, which I thought was really dope. It was really, really one of my favorite albums of that year. Actually, I think it was one of the first albums I reviewed from my hiatus. And this album, Book of Ryan, was supposed to come out the same year. But you know how that shit goes. Like, sometimes you think an album's gonna come out, and then it takes years and years me it's all good I'm, I'm not thinking about me i'm thinking about whatever so now we gonna see if book of ryan is a dope album that was worth the wait or if sometimes you don't want to read the book sometimes you need to just get the cliff notes or sometimes you just need to not even go to the bookstore at all because the shit's fucking whack Let's talk about the shit. Now, when I first popped in this album and tuned into the production, I realized that Royce went with a really heavy, but very, very hard-hitting sound with the production on here. This album, he says, is his most personal album, and he really taps into a lot of personal issues and a lot of things that goes along with his life. So he really fits the production around that theme and those concepts very well with some very heavy, very wavy, dark, sort of like sinister, somber sounds. But there's also some very hard hitting and high energy production on here as well that cater to more of the traditional hip hop style that Royce likes to do. And I think this album just has a really good balance as far as production is concerned. There really were no whack or terrible beats on here. I really vibed with a lot of the beats on here. Most of them had my head nodding. Some I thought were really, really dope. And some I thought were just cool, but they fit Royce's voice and style and cadence and just what he was talking about very, very well. So I think Royce did a great job picking these beats for this album because I think he did all of them justice and they all were utilized very very, very well and when it comes to the actual producers on the album he's got a lot of motherfuckers on this motherfucker so hold on he's got he's an ant-man wonder who did the whole prime shit when he was the source material of prime so ant-man wonder was on the intro and then we got key wayne mr porter of course he's always worked with mr porter uh s1 who's dope epic pro uh who else dj khalil okay dj khalil is like the new fucking balal i ain't seen balal in a minute but yo dj khalil all over the place uh fuse uh 808 ray cool and dre street runner Tariq, Azuz, uh, fuck, who what? Boy Wanda, Illmind, and Frank Dukes. Okay, so he's got some very notable names on this album, and they all come through, like I said, with some top quality production that really fits Royce's style, but also gives a very, very sinister or dark or very melodic or very just dreary tone to it. But also, like I said, there's those high energy beats on here as well that Royce can go in and just spit them crazy bars that we know he has, and it really works out well. So I think that the production here, like I said, overall is very, very well done. Some beats on here I like a lot more than others, but there were no beats on here that I absolutely hated or thought was whack. So that's good because there's a lot of tracks on here, and for all of them to be really, really solid production choices just goes to show the ear that Royce has as far as beats go and how he just knows how to pick great beats to go on an album. And when it comes to Royce himself, you know he's gonna give you those crazy bars and multi-syllables and metaphors and all that shit that we love to hear from Royce. But on this album, what he really did was he really went deep and personal with himself. Like I said, Royce said this is his most personal album and he really touches on a lot of things about his childhood, his upbringing, his family, himself. He has a lot of storytelling on this album, which is really, really phenomenal. It's probably some of the best storytelling I've heard in some time. Royce has always been a good storyteller, but on this album, he seems to come to a very, very higher level or a higher quality of it on this album, which is really, really dope. But at the same time, Royce ain't left out the bars, y'all. He got bar after bar after bar on this album, and it's just so goddamn fire. And there's like, wait, hold on. That's a lot of motherfucking tracks. on. It's like 20 tracks on here, and it's like a 70-minute album, and Royce is just going. He's got bars all over this goddamn thing. So mostly the core of this album is 
great bars, and great storytelling. That's what you're going to get from this album, and Royce does both of them so, so damn well, and they both come off very, very good. And when it comes to the features on the album, just like the production, Royce got some heavy hitters on here to come through and help him out, and this motherfucker's rolling decks is thick. I'm just, I mean, do they still use that shit? Probably not, but whatever. Well, he's got Eminem on here, King Green, Ashley Sorrell, Boogie, uh, J. Cole, Pusha T, Jadakiss, Fabulous, Agent Sasko, Melanie Rutherford, uh, Mr. Porter, Marsha Ambrosius, uh, Robert Glasper, fuck, uh, T-Pain back in this thing, Chavis Chandler, and Logic. Okay, that's it. Did that, did I, get I got everybody. Okay, and like I said, mostly everybody on here came through and did their damn thing. But even though everything overall is mostly dope, there are some spots on here that I really just thought would could have been done better or I really didn't care too much for. Like the song with T-Pain, which is actually the last song first of the month, I, that song just like I, I, don't, I don't know what it do done for me, y'all. I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's good to hear T Pain again because you don't hear to hear him much. But like for some reason, like that song just really didn't do much for me. The beat on there, like it was just cool to me. Uh, T Pain's feature on here, it was just decent as well. I mean, he was rapping a lot like the newer rappers these days. I mean, he really didn't give me that vintage T Pain feel, which is what I wish we would have got. And then you also got the remix, the Caterpillar with Logic, and his verse. He like went on a rant in the middle of his verse about him being like white or black and white or or something like that. It was this weird moment. Like I didn't like his verse, y'all. And he he was on Twitter saying, "Yo, this is the hardest verse I ever did." Nigga, have the verse was you just ranting and talking and shit. How is that? that? That don't count, nigga. That don't count. So like I really like the original Caterpillar as aside from the remix. I'm glad that was just a bonus track and that really wasn't the real verse because I would have been disappointed. But other than that, everything else on here was pretty much solid and on point and I either really loved it or really, really liked it. But those moments right there, eh, eh, eh that was it. Now, you know I gotta give you my top five tracks, y'all, and this was a little difficult because I really liked a good majority, if not most of the songs on this album, except for the ones that I mentioned before. But I did lock down five, y'all, so here they go. They may change later on because, you know, even though when you listen to the album, sometimes shit grows on you. But right now it's Caterpillar, and then Dumb, and then Cocaine, and then Boblo Boat, and then Power. And there's a lot of songs on here that are close to like knocking out some of those songs, but right now those are my favorite five. So let's go to the top. So we got Caterpillar, which features Eminem and King Green. Pretty much everybody's already heard this song, so I'm not gonna say too much about it. It's a bar fest. The beat on here, very hard hitting, really, really eerie with these chilling like chime sounds in there, but also it's got a really dope hook from King Green. I love his hook. Royce comes through with crazy verses. He's got dope lines left and right. I like the line where he says, I do what I wanna do, they do what I let them do. Like, motherfucker controls everything. I do what I want, Royce. I'll ask you first, though, because, you know, sometimes maybe I don't want to cross no lines. Boy, fuck it. But it's a dope-ass fucking verse. He, two verses. He really does his damn thing. But let's talk about Eminem, because Eminem gave us a verse which was so fucking dope. He really, really got a fire under his hands from all that fucking revival talk. This is what we needed to hear from him on revival. Now, he's come through with some crazy lines. He's got a crazy Anderson Silva fucking reference on here, which is insane. And then he's even back with the poop references, but it ain't bad as, like, booty is heavy duty like diarrhea. He actually has some clever lines on here where he talks about like his shit is real like he poops Jerusalem, which is really funny. Or like, you know, his bars always got his stools in them. So this verse actually is really, really dope. And it really just, you know, talk about how, you know, you got to respect the butterfly, but also you got to respect the caterpillar because before he comes to butterfly, you know, you give him all that praise. He was just the caterpillar like trying to crawl around and get around with life. So you got to respect both because that's what the song is really about. The next song is Dumb and it features Boogie, who I believe is the newest signing to Shady Records. I haven't heard much from him, but I really like what he did on this track. The beat on here is very hard hitting. Got a really like West Coast vibe to it, like a Dr. Dre-ish feel to it. I mean, who made this shit? Actually? Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Who made Dumb? Uh, uh, S1 and Epic Pro, okay. So yeah, it's really got this hard hitting vibe that I really like. And it's got this real cool sample where it's like, dumb. It's like they really use this, like, I don't know who, where it's from, but it's really cool and it kind of really incorporates the whole theme of what they think is dumb. Royce comes through with a really dope verse. Boogie comes through with a really dope verse and some singing as well. Even Royce has a little bit of singing and I just really think it's a hard hitting, dope track. Another just bar fest right here and it just really works out very well, but also some gems in there that talks about what he thinks is dumb, like the industry and just the shit that he goes through in life. So Royce really comes through with another solid track. Like this song, it is not dumb, but it is dumb good. Was that dumb? That was probably, shut. I'm like, whatever. The next song, Cocaine, is a really, really dope song that kind of grew on me. When I first heard it, I was like, eh, about it, but it really did grow on me after a while. It's really more, more so like a harmonizing and a singing song from Royce. And Royce doesn't have the best voice, but he really does 
he has like this certain cadence to his voice which really really does sound good over certain production and this is one of them to me personally. But the real strong point of this song is the concept and the story which is really centered around Royce's father and how Royce found out that his father was addicted to cocaine by going into his car and looking for something that his father asked him to get but instead he found a bag of cocaine and he, he actually he's like, yo dad what's this? And he's like oh that must be my friends from work you know he be tripping you know putting drugs in my car don't tell your mama. But basically he's pretty much talking about how cocaine pretty much not only shaped his father's life but his family life because the effects of what his addiction did really trickled down to the entire family and everything like that and also it talks about how his father finally decided to get clean go to rehab and he did it because he wanted to stay with his family and he didn't want his family to continue to be affected by his addiction so it's a really dope song a really personal deep song i really love what royce did on here and it just comes off so damn well so yeah don't do cocaine y'all don't no, no, no nose candy ain't for you it ain't dandy it really ain't the next song bob love boat features j cole and this song right here is just so damn smooth the beat on here is really just so laid back it sounds like some shit that you like smoke to if you smoked i don't smoke but if i did smoke i'd smoke to this shit because the beat is just so damn chill and laid back and it really just fits J. Cole so well. This sounds like something that would be on J. Cole's album rather than Royce's album, but it fits well because Royce sounds good on here as well. And Royce is talking about his memories of being on a Bablo boat, which I guess is a boat that they had in Detroit. They went to this island called Bablo Island, which was, I guess, like the black amusement park that you can go to, but it was like kind of hood, but like, you know, that's where they went to to go to like family vacation and shit. But it's just Royce talking about his life experiences on the Bablo boat with his family, how his brother took his first drink on a Bablo boat and he ended up becoming an alcoholic, like Royce become an alcoholic. Like, there's a lot of alcoholic and addiction problems in Royce's family. And kind of like the Bob Lowe boat was like sort of like a catalyst to that in a way, as well as a whole bunch of other things. And J. Cole, he wasn't on the Bob Lowe boat because he was from North Carolina, but he just talked about his upbringing and pretty much the things that he went through growing up in his life. So it's pretty much two perspectives of just, you know, how they went through life and how they went through these certain situations that shaped them. And it's really a dope song and a dope concept. And the beat on here is just so smooth. I love the beat on here. It just sounds so good. And I love the intro that they they did in here and it's just it's just a dope ass song and they did a video for it i like the video for it. I, everything i think it was like the first single good first single good track good j cole feature shit's fire i want to go on a bible boat now and the last song is power and i think this right here is probably the best storytelling song on the album to me personally or probably one of the strongest and it's very long it's like a six minute track and it's produced by boy wonder but i just think this song is so deep so powerful but also very very hilarious the way that sometimes that like, royce just delivers this shit because it's relatable and also you can just visualize everything that he's saying because he's so descriptive in the way that he's just telling the story he's pretty much talking about all the holidays that his family spent with like christmas and thanksgiving and you know how usually like these holidays are supposed to be joyous and fun not in this nigga's house no shit was chaos and fucking abuse and fights and drunkenness and it wasn't good it wasn't good at all and he's just pretty much telling like like the stories of like okay how you know on Christmas like you know one of the kids got some fake Tim's but the mom put it in a real Timberland box and they was worried that he was only roasted at school and then he ended up getting roasted at school or like in Thanksgiving like that his brother Greg who was drinking and came home drunk he got in a fight with his dad who confronted him because his dad was like upset about him being drunk and Greg was disrespecting him so he got knocked out so bad that he hit the stove and the turkey fell off and fell down the stairs or something and the cops got called and his dad got locked up. That's not the hell of a Thanksgiving for your ass. Nobody filmed that shit? What? I mean, like, nobody had a... We're probably back in the day, nobody had smartphone cameras because that shit would have been all over the place. But after all these highly descriptive and tragic stories, Royce comes to the realization that, like, at the end of it all, his father was a very, very, like, key component and a very highly respected dude in his eyes because of what he did to kind of, like, shape his family, even though it went in very, very violent or probably erratic ways. He just really appreciates it at the end of the day. And especially because he has his own son to take care of, so he's learned from all those experiences growing up with his father and his family. And that's my top five, y'all. But honestly, y'all, there are so many songs on here that I, I missed the top five, but I mean, they are so dope. Like, you know, Godspeed's dope. Uh, fucking Life is Fair is dope. Uh, Summer on Lock was dope. I thought it would have been a little bit better, but I will say, like, the verses on there were dope. I think Fabulous killed it. You know, Jadakiss came through and Pusha T came through with what you would expect them to come through. But it wasn't as crazy as I expected to be with the names, but it was still dope. Um, Amazing is very interesting because of the, the, the high, you know, energy and sort of like the bright type of beat on it, but I think I really dug it. Also, uh, who else? A Strong Friend is a very dope song where it talks about how, you know, everybody goes to that one person, or that one friend when they're feeling down, but nobody really checks on that strong friend to see how they're doing. 
And I mean, I, you know, sometimes I'm considered the strong friend at times. Well, I've known people who consider the strong friends, and they really don't ever get asked how they're doing at times. So it's, that's a dope ass song, and I like that concept. So there's a lot of songs on here that are really, really dope that just missed the top five. But overall, I think Royce did a great job illustrating and telling us his upbringing, his story. He's got a lot of great moments on here, some skits that involve his son, where his son is pretty much like interviewing him. We're trying to figure out who he is, which makes Royce really think back and realize some things, as well as just a whole bunch of other great moments. And you still get the bars. There's bars all over this goddamn album. So Royce gives us a little bit of everything, but he executes it so well. And aside from those last two tracks on the album and a somewhat disappointing track on Summer on Lock, which it was still dope, I just thought it would have been better, Overall, this is still a really, really dope album, and I highly, highly, highly enjoyed it, and I will be listening to it more and more as the year goes on. So my final verdict, I'm not saying that Royce the 5'9", Book of Ryan is a very dope, well put together album that really showcases Royce's skill, storytelling ability, and also gives us a more in-depth look at who Royce is or was growing up, which is really, really dope. All I'm saying is that the beats on here are dope, the features on here are dope, storytelling on here is immaculate, and also Royce is coming through with bars, bars, bars. You get everything that you want from Royce to 5'9", and it seems like at this point in his career, he's just getting better and better. It's not a perfect album, but it's a very, very, very good album, and I really, really enjoyed a good, I would say, 80 to 85% of this easily. So all I gotta say is that for me, Royce to 5'9", Book of Ryan, just barely, y'all, Misses the granddad approved because of those other things, but I will give it the highest, the highest of the very highly granddad recommended. Like, y'all, I mean, I, I feel bad not giving it the proof, but I got to be honest with myself. I just didn't love everything about this album, and that's what really held it back. But there's so much in this album that's so damn good and so damn dope. You will enjoy this if you're a Royce the Five Nine fan. But I got nothing more to say. Royce the Five Nine, Book of Ryan, is very highly, the highest of the very highly, granddad recommended. So go check out the shit right fucking now. Flip it. All right, y'all, that's gonna do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Royce the 5'9", Book of Ryan. If you've heard it, if you have not heard it, definitely go check out this album, especially if you're a fan of Royce. He gives it all to you. He eat the bars, he eat the storytelling, the beats are crazy, and everything just comes through so well. And like I said, for the most part, this entire album is fire, except for those last little two parts and some things in the middle here and there. But overall, dope album. You're gonna enjoy it. I know you will, because like, yo, if you don't, then something's fucking wrong with you, because Royce is a vet and he got that fire all day, every day. So check it out right now. Previous videos on the side was my latest single. Check that out. Show us some love. And as always, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description below. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. We'll be reviews twice a week if I can, y'all. Because, you know, I've been slipping, y'all. But it's all good. I'm trying. You know, I got a lot of shit going on. You know, I'm trying to finish an album. And, you know, everything else in my life is crazy. But I'm getting the videos out when I can because I got y'all. I know y'all want to see the shit. And I want to do the shit. So we're going to get it when we get it. But it's fire. But I got nothing more to say. So until next time I take my leave, granddaughter. Royce the 5'9", Book of Ryan, shit is fire. I mean, if you make an actual book, Royce, I'll hit up the Barnes & Noble after I leave the section with Dr. Seuss, because that's my, still my favorite. I'm a grown-ass man. I don't give a fuck. Cat in the hat, fox and socks, that's my shit. And we got the same birthday. It's a kindred spirit thing. I'm th Just go read this. I'm gonna listen to this. Whatever the fuck this is, do this, and then get a book afterwards, because you got to read. Reading is better. I don't do it, but someone should. I'm out of here.